exploratory data analysis. Box plots along with a review of quartiles and outliers. In a previous lesson, we constructed the five number summary for the July 1st to June 30th annual rainfall in Los Angeles for the years 1997 to 1998 through 2016 to 2017. The five number summary can be used to construct a graph called a box plot. It is important that the box plot is scaled on a horizontal axis. Here is a horizontal axis that is scaled from 0 to 40. This will be convenient since our minimum value is 3.21 and our maximum value is 37.25. We will begin by drawing a vertical line above the horizontal axis at the minimum value of 3.21 and label it. Next, we will draw another vertical line above the horizontal axis at the maximum value of 37.25 and also label that. Now, we will draw a box with vertical lines that set the outer boundaries at the first quartile of 8.605 and the third quartile of 17.215. This box will also have a vertical line that marks the median value of 10.61. The box plot is completed by drawing a horizontal line that extends from the minimum value to the center of the box, and a similar horizontal line that extends to the maximum value. The box plot shows us the distribution of the data values with regard to the quartiles. For instance, we can see that 50% of the data values appear to be clustered in a short span from the minimum value of 3.21 to the median of 10.61. We likewise can see that the upper 25% of the data set appears to have a wider spread, as the box plot shows, by the length of the horizontal line that connects the third quartile and the maximum data value. Sometimes a data set might contain what is called an outlier. An outlier is an extremely high or extremely low data value when compared to the rest of the data values. One method for finding outliers in a data set utilizes a measure called the interquartile range, which is frequently abbreviated IQR. The interquartile range is the difference between the first and third quartiles. Substituting these values, we will find that the interquartile range for this data set is 8.61. We will evaluate two formulas. The first is the first quartile minus one and a half times the interquartile range, and the second is the third quartile plus one and a half times the interquartile range. These two formulas provide us with the left and right endpoints for an interval. Data values that lie outside of this interval we will consider to be outliers of the data set. Substituting in the first formula, we will find the left point of negative 4.31. Substituting into the second formula, we will find a right endpoint of 30.13. We can see from the ordered data set that the values 31.01 and 37.25 lie outside of this interval. So we will consider 31.01 and 37.25 inches of rain to be the outliers. Review of quartiles using a TI graphing calculator. 30 students in a class took a test, and the scores are shown below. The instructor wished to find the quartiles for this data set. The quartiles separate the data set into four equal groups. We can use a TI graphing calculator to calculate the quartiles. We will begin by entering the data into a list. So we will enter this data into list 1. In order to find the quartiles, we will press STAT, cursor over to CALC, then press 1 for one variable statistics. We want to make sure that list 1 is specified, since that is where we have placed our data. 
Then we will cursor down to calculate and press enter. Then cursor down to the bottom and we will find that the first quartile is 36, the median or the second quartile is 52, and the third quartile is 61. Here is a dot plot for the data. The bottom 25% of the data extends from the minimum value of 21 up to the first quartile of 36. The next 25% of the data extends from the first quartile of 36 up to the second quartile of 52. The next 25% of the data extends from the second quartile or median of 52 to the third quartile of 61. And the upper 25% extends from the third quartile of 61 up to the maximum value of 98. Although these intervals vary in width, it is important to note that each contains the same number of data values. These varying widths exhibit the way the data values are distributed between these intervals. In addition to dividing the data set into four equal groups, quartiles can be used as a rough measure of variability. This measure of variability, which uses quartiles, is called the interquartile range and is the range of the middle 50% of the data values. The interquartile range is abbreviated IQR. The formula for the interquartile range is simply to subtract the first quartile from the third quartile. So we will subtract 36 from 61 to find that the interquartile range is 25. This means that the middle 50% of the data has a span of 25 units. The instructor decided to allow the students to retake the test. The scores for the retaking test are shown below. The instructor wishes to find the quartiles for the scores of the retaken test. We will enter this data into list 2. So again, we will press stat, cursor over to calc, press 1 for one variable statistics, and this time we want to find the quartiles for the data values that are in list 2. So we will press second, L2, to change the specified list to L2, then cursor down to calculate, and press enter. Again, we will cursor down to the bottom and find that the first quartile is 72, the median or second quartile is 83, and the third quartile is 90. Again, a dot plot can show us the span of data points in each quartile. The interquartile range of this data set is 18, so the middle 50% of the data values are concentrated into a shorter span for the second set of data. Constructing a box plot using a TI graphing calculator. Since we have previously learned how to find the five number summary for the test scores for a class of 30 students, we will now learn how to use the TI graphing calculator to construct its box plot as shown here. We should begin by pressing STAT and then 1 to edit a list, then enter the values into list 1. In order to graph a box plot, we will begin by pressing second stat plot. We will first want to make sure that all of the plots are off, so we'll do so by pressing four, then enter. We get a notation that the process is done. So now we'll return to second stat plot, and we now see that all the plots are off. We will work with the first one, so we'll press enter, and then we'll make sure that we turn this one on. We will need to select the correct type of graph, which in this case will be a box plot. So we'll cursor down to type and then cursor over to the icon that looks like a box plot. Then press enter. We will want to make sure that this is the correct list specified. Our data is in list 1, so we'll make sure that that is the list selected. Now we'll press graph, and our box plot shows. If the box plot does not show in the window, it is important to make sure the window is set with the correct parameters so that the entire box plot is displayed. We will do that by pressing zoom and then 9 for zoom stat.
This set of data also from our previous video shows the scores for the retake of the same test. We will use the TI graphing calculator to generate this box plot also. Once the data values are entered into list 2, we will press second stat plot so that we can now view the box plots together. Cursor down to plot 2 and press enter. Highlight on and press enter. Cursor down to the graph type and then cursor over to the box plot icon. Then press enter. This second set of data is entered into list 2, so we will cursor down to X list, then press second, L2, then press graph. We now can compare the distributions of data for the two different data sets. In the first data set, the line to the right is longer, which indicates a positively skewed set of data. In the second set of data, which represented the retake of the same exam, we can see that the line of the left is longer, which indicates a negatively skewed set of data. Now let's follow along with your student notes. Let's go ahead and use techniques of exploratory data analysis, including box plots and five number summaries, to discover various aspects of data. The five number summary includes five specific values. One, the minimum value of the data set. Two, the first quartile. Three, the second quartile or median. Four, the third quartile. And finally, the maximum value of the data set. A box plot is a graphical representation of the data set. To construct a box plot, first find the five number summary as you have done in previous lessons. First, draw a horizontal axis and place the scale on the axis. The scale should start on or below the minimum data value and end on or above the maximum data value. Then locate and mark each of the values of the five number summary. Then draw a box with vertical sides through Q1 and Q3. Draw a vertical line through the median. Finally, draw a horizontal line from the minimum data value to the left side of the box and draw a line from the maximum data value to the right side of the box. Some information that we obtain from the box plot are as follows. If the median is near the center of the box, the distribution is approximately symmetric. If the median is to the left of the center of the box, the distribution is positively skewed. If the median is to the right of the center of the box, the distribution is negatively skewed. 2. If the lines from the box to the minimum and maximum are about the same length, the distribution is approximately symmetric. If the line from the box to the minimum is longer than the line from the box to the maximum, the distribution is negatively skewed. And finally, if the line from the box to the minimum is shorter than the line from the box to the maximum, the distribution is positively skewed. Example, find the five number summary and construct a box plot. For the given data set used in example 317, find the five number summary and then construct a box plot. First, let's go ahead and arrange the data in order. Now we go ahead and proceed to find the five number summary. Here, I invite you to pause the video and try to find those numbers yourself. The five number summary is as follows. Let us now construct the box plot. 
First, we go ahead and draw a horizontal axis that is, in this case, scaled from 12 to 36, where 12 happens to be our min and 36 happens to be our max. I will now draw two small vertical lines over 12 and 36. Next, I will indicate where is Q1 and Q3. Q1 being at 14, and Q3 being at 23.5. I will draw longer vertical lines above those two items. Now let's go ahead and indicate the median of 18. Draw lines in the top and the bottom to complete our box. And now we go ahead and connect horizontal lines from the minimum to the box itself, and again from the maximum to the box itself. The box plot for this example, you'll notice, has a shorter line on the left than it does on the right. Also, the median is to the left of the center of the box. So the distribution appears to be right or positively skewed. 